I'd like to play a game with all of you. I'm gonna display a series of images behind me and I want you all to take a moment and think. If you think it's fact or fiction. Starting with the first image, beating heart in a dish. Fact or fiction? This is fact. It turns out that scientists from the Massachusetts General Hospital and the Harvard Medical School generated a beating heart in a dish. They took regular cells, engineered it to its stem-like state, implanted it in a heart-shaped capsule, shocked it with an electric current, and brought it back to life. Could you imagine you becoming your own self-replacing entity? If you ever need a heart transplant, you won't longer have to wait in line. Next image. Glow-in-the-dark kittens. Fact or fiction? Seems like it's divided in half, as if you guys planned this. It's a fact. Scientists at the Mayo Clinic in the Yamaguchi University in Japan engineered a cat stem cell embryo to fluoresce the color green. Why? Because it's cute? <laughs> because they wanted to follow the progression of the cat version of the HIV virus under the right UV light. The cells involved in the progression of the HIV will flash green making it easy for scientists to track them. Next picture, mouse pup created by two biologically female, same sex, parents. Fact or fiction? Some of you are having second thoughts. It's a fact. Most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with in vivo fertilization, if you know what I mean. Some of you are familiar with in vitro fertilization. Fertilization in a dish. What you see behind me may be the next and biggest breakthrough in reproductive technology. In vitro gametogenesis. Gametes, sperm, egg. Scientists could now take a skin cell residing on your arm or even a simple cheek swab from the inside of your mouth. Engineer it to become a gamete-like cell, ready for fertilization. Infertility could become a thing of the past. Same-sex couples could see children born out of their own biological DNA. It gives people an option that have no options that may be born with the inability to make sperm or egg. Could you imagine a baby born out of the genetic material of a celebrity who has shed their skin cells, and left them behind at their hotel room? With this technology, it's possible. Children could be born with unknown identities. Next picture. Designer babies. Has anyone seen the movie Gattaca? Or us scientists would like to call it guanine, adenine, thymine, thymine. <laughs> it starred Ethan Hawke, who wanted to travel to outer space, but was considered genetically inferior. So he went to his friend, I guess he knew a guy, and said, hey, how about I buy your set of genes? He was considered genetically superior, whatever that meant. Now, I didn't watch the movie, so I'm not really sure what happened next. 
But back to the story. Designer babies, fact or fiction? This is a fact. Dr. Jiang Ku from the Southern University of Science and Technology in China gained notoriety in 2018 by claiming to have been the first to engineer human embryos. He claimed that children born out of parents who carry and are inflicted with the HIV virus will be born inherently resistant to the HIV virus, rendering them genetically superior than you and I. Now look around you. Do you think you're sitting next to designer humans? Some of you have a nervous look. <laughs> Lulu and Nana, the twins born out of this study, were born healthy and viable, according to Dr. Jiang Ku. Interesting, right? Seems like a virtuous uh, endeavor, cutting out a gene that's involved in the HIV virus. How did he do it? He used the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, a molecular scissor. He cut out a gene called CCR5 that lies on the cell surface that allows the cell, the virus, to enter the cell. Now, if you remove the doorway, you'll remove the possibility of ever getting the HIV virus. Wouldn't it be cool if we can cut out genes that are involved in some predispositions to cancer or heart disease? Could this be a slippery slope? Remember what they say, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Now what if I want blue eyes or blonde hair? I mean natural blonde hair, this came from a bottle or I wanted to be taller, or stronger, considering I have the upper body strength of a dying moth. <laughs> now do you see the slippery slope? We actually get to decide with this technology the trajectory of the human race. Despite these advancements and achievements, none of these are ready for human clinical use or commercial use just yet. So no, you can't find a glow-in-the-dark cat at your nearest Petco. I checked. <laughs> but now, we're coming, acro coming across the most ethical, profound ethical and moral dilemmas that we will face as a society. I believe we are now ready for public discourse. It should no longer happen behind the scenes. So what do all these technologies have in common? They're all born from the field of regenerative medicine and stem cell engineering. How many of you have heard of stem cells? How many of you pretend to know what they are? <laughs> Where do they come from? What are they even? Well, I was a stem cell once, so I figured I'd take you on that journey. This is me today. But I'd like to go back in time a little bit further. No, a little bit further than that. No, a little further than that. Nope, a little bit further, please. Sorry, those are my parents. I'd like to be conceived first. Can we go forward? There I am. This is me, a few cells old. You may not recognize me in this picture. I guess the lighting was bad. We didn't have filters back then. Settle down, millennials. My parents at this stage called me Toadie for Toady Potent. That means these cells are me in this picture. I'm capable of making the full human you see today and 
the shelter I'll be housed in for the next mon nine months, the extra embryonic tissue, and the placenta. Let's move forward in time. This is me as an embryo. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I have gained a few pounds. And yes, it's water weight. <laughs> I was about five to 40 days old, I don't remember. I didn't have a brain back then. At this stage, my parents called me plurry, for pluripotent. That means I could be any cell I want, any tissue really, brain, liver. I could be anything I want to be. You know how your parents, when you were younger, they'd ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? You can be anything you want to be. And then you grow up and realize that's all a lie because guess who's not a mermaid yet, mom? <laughs> At this stage, these cells can be a heart, brain, bone, liver, kidney, you name it. A weird birthmark on my back I need to get checked out. Okay, let's move forward. This is me as a baby. I was actually born with the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck but that was just a fashion statement. <laughs> At this stage, the only cells left behind are multi, for multipotent stem cells. Remember these, we're gonna come back to them. In fact, those are the only ones you're born with. And those are the only ones that you have for the rest of your life. You may need them when you break a leg or scar yourself. This is me, 86 years after fertilization. They say when you grow old, you gain wisdom and knowledge. But what they don't tell you is that you lose skin elasticity. Your bone starts to wither. Your muscles atrophy. You just keep forgetting things. And you keep losing them. I remember at nine years old, my grandfather showed early signs of dementia. He kept forgetting my name. So I ran up to him and said, hey, Grandpa, will you ever forget me? And then he bent down and said, Rowan, we never forget the people we love. Sweet, right? Guess who forgot me in a parking lot one time? My grandfather. Rest in peace, Grandpa. And then I thought two things. One, how do I get back home? My mom's gonna kill me. She would never believe that he just forgot me in a parking lot. I was also a runner when I was younger, so I was already high risk. And two, I thought, what do I have that he doesn't? Is this just aging? Just old age? Is it permanent? Is it reversible? Is there anything I can do Today, I'm a PhD candidate in the neurosciences and the regenerative sciences training program. And I work under the mentorship and guidance of a world-renowned neurosurgeon, Dr. Alfredo Quinones Hinojosa. In the lab, we work on brain cancer. From a source, everyone is far too willing to give up fat. Dr. Q wants to end brain cancer. In fact, in our lab, we use the C word, cure. So let me show you one of the first samples that I got from one of our patients. This is from lipo aspirate procedure. This would have been discarded anyway. So we were isolating fat stem cells. I was really excited because I thought, what could I possibly regenerate? So I took this back to lab, and two weeks later, I generated from fat stem cells more fat. Needless to say, I wasn't very proud of myself. Obviously, I was going to generate more fat from fat stem cells. So I chalked it up as an honest mistake and then went back to lab and tried again. This time, I used different ingredients, and we generated 
cartilage. So I got really excited, went back to lab, isolated the fat stem cells again, regenerated bone. This would have come in handy in seventh grade when I broke my ankle doing Michael Jackson's moonwalk. Was I proud of it? No. Was I good at it? No. So I thought about my grandfather. We can make from fat stem cells, more fat, cartilage, bone, could we make brain cells? He was dying of dementia. He was losing brain cells, and it was permanent. So I went back to lab, and we tried, but it turns out we just can't, not from these fat stem cells. Why? Because remember, a multipotent stem cell is a stem cell that's already pre-specialized, predestined to make some tissue, but not all. I wonder if we had a little bit of youth dust. Turns out, the youth dust is called the Yamanaka factors. The biggest breakthrough of the century in stem cell technology. Just four factors alone, and you can take any aged cell in your body, engineer it to revert it back in time to its primitive state, the pluripotent, and use it for gene editing, like designer babies or glow-in-the-dark cat, or cell replacement therapy, like people who are infertile that can't make sperm or eggs, or even tissue regeneration for beating hearts in a dish. But I wasn't done yet. Now, I personally don't work on induced pluripotent stem cells. I still work with fat, fat stem cells. So we thought, OK, well, fat stem cells can't generate brain cells. But can they maybe heal a diseased brain, like brain cancer? I work in grade four glioma, the most fatal type of primary brain cancer, glioblastoma. Let me give you a scenario. Imagine all of you tomorrow wake up being told you have glioblastoma. Now let me tell you the odds you're working with. 95% of you in this room will die of this disease in one year. The rest of you, 5%, may live past five years. But for most of you, despite the most aggressive type of chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, you most likely will not live past two years. Now, it's safe to say it's a fatal disease. Why? It turns out that even with the most brilliant neurosurgeon, we cannot get the cells left behind after surgery. Even when they're resected, there are some that are left behind that move away from the site of origin. And those are the cells that are responsible for therapy resistance and relapse. We believe those are the culprits behind this fatality. Now, they can't be picked up by MRI. It's like a silent battle. What you see behind me is my research. In blue, our mouse brain. In green, our brain cancer cells. In red, our fat stem cells. They're housed and encapsulated in a hydrogel to seal fibrin glue, or the more scientific term, that orange blob over there. Now, it turns out that these fat stem cells in red have this remarkable capacity to scavenge and look for diseased brain cells that may be cancerous. Now, in this model, I tried to replicate what the surgeon does. The mouse had a brain tumor. I resected it. And then when the resection cavity was open, I implanted a hydrogel that holds the fat stem cells like a shelter. 
These fat stem cells were nano-engineered with a cancer-killing bullet. So they migrate along the track of these green brain cancer cells and ready for battle. Once they arrive next to a cancer cell, they secrete a cancer-killing cargo. Now, are stem cells a cure for all? No. There is so much we don't know. Remember Lulu and Nana, the designer babies with CCR5 gene removed? Turns out in some other study, the CCR5 gene, for those who have a mutation, have a 20% decrease in lifespan. Remember the beating heart in a dish? When they were implanted in another heart to regenerate, they had different beats causing arrhythmia. Remember the tissue regeneration where you can make any tissue in the body? When they were implanted, we found aneuploidy, an odd number of chromosomes. There is so much we don't know. With such remarkable technology, it does come with unprecedented risks. Now, what are stem cells? Why do we need them? They're your body's own material. We no longer live in a society of infection, kill, pill. We're dying of chronic diseases, of pure wear and tear. We need a different treatment paradigm now, one that replenishes and restores something that has undergone permanent damage. Does that make you your own self-replacing entity? What pops to mind now? Immortality? Not quite. But isn't it beautiful to think so? Thank you.